Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. My name is Miss Estrick and if you are new around here then I've been teaching for over 10 years in school but also online more recently to help you to get to grips with those most challenging topics in biology from previous study skills techniques and to help you to get the grades that you deserve. Now in this video we're going to be going through exam stress, anxiety and what you can do to try and come to grips with that stress and anxiety and take control of it. Now if you are new here you might not have seen some of the study resources I offer which can also help with your revision as well as these videos. So the most popular one I have at the moment is my active recall workbook which you can see just here that covers all of the a-level theory and it tests your knowledge actively so it's a really good way to help improve your memory and understanding of the content and help you to streamline your revision so you know what to focus on also it comes with the answers so you can see model answers but for now back to today's video so i'm going to focus on three key things to help with exam stress and anxiety before i go through that though i do just want to make you all aware that it is completely normal to be feeling stressed anxious worried while you're revising the night before and even after exams so don't feel like there is something wrong with you if you are feeling that way. If it becomes overwhelming though, that's when you might want to seek some extra help. And there are sites like youngminds.co.uk, which I'll link in the description, which have amazing advice and they can provide support. So definitely check that out. My three tips though today should help as well. So the first one is do not underestimate the effect of breaks in your revision. Sometimes people might think that if I do like three hours in a row, then that's gonna be great, I've got loads done. But the downside of that is the three hour chunk might not be as effective. You also then might be so tired that you feel the need to take a nap and then that's it, the afternoon's gone. But also it's important that you are giving yourself break so you can do a little walk if you need some fresh air or get the drink get some food and you're not tiring yourself out and you're not going to burn out so really follow the school routine that has been designed based on how teenagers can focus best so that's what you should follow so an hour lesson that's what is typical followed by maybe a five minutes break in between and then after every two hours, you have either a 20 minute break or an hour break. So do not underestimate the effect of breaks on your mental health. And in those breaks, try and make sure you are being disciplined. If it's only a five minute break, don't turn the telly on, but maybe check something on your phone. But if it's only five minutes, it's probably just gonna be getting yourself a refreshment. If it's a longer break, then yeah, maybe you might wanna watch something on TV. Even better, if it's a nice day, go outside, get a bit of fresh air. But make sure you are taking those breaks. And if you schedule them in, they are guilt-free as well. The next huge thing is your sleep. Sleep is so essential to your physical health, your mental health, but also your brain's ability to store and recall information. So if you're doing hours of work every day and then at night and you're not really sleeping, then your brain isn't actually able to file all that information. Because that's basically what happens when you sleep. Everything that you've been going through in the day, your brain sorts it into a filing cabinet. And if you're not resting, then that's not gonna happen. The day's revision, is potentially wasted. So how can you improve your sleep though? That's the key thing. What I always suggest is do not work after 8 p.m., 9 p.m. at the very latest. And that then means you have from 8 or 9 p.m. some time to yourself to do what you want to do, whether that is a bit of computer games, TV, chatting to friends, but give yourself at least an hour to do whatever it is that you want. Then make sure the screens are off and you do something else, whether it's reading or just chatting to someone in your family, where you then get a little bit more wind down time. Hopefully that then means that your brain isn't so fired up and active and you should be able to fall asleep much more easier. Other tips are having a blue screen filter or blue light filter on your phone. You could make sure you're not having caffeine don't drink caffeine if you're struggling to sleep. It could be maybe try and do a bit more exercise in the day and that could just be like a 10 minute walk. And also making sure that you don't have devices in your room that are gonna be buzzing if you get a notification or flashing. My final tip is the piece of advice that I've given to so many of my students over the years, particularly the students in my tutor group. And that is what I like to call the plan B method. 
Whenever I felt stressed or overwhelmed about exams or job interviews or whatever it might be, often it's because I'm no longer in control of it. And I am a little bit of a control freak. So what I always think is, if this exam goes badly, what is the worst case scenario? And for you, I'm guessing it'd probably be worst case scenario. I get really bad grades in all of my A-levels. I don't get the job offer I had or my university place and that is gone. So what you then need to think is, well, if that happens, what are you gonna do? So this is where you then take control. So it might be, well, if I don't get the grades that I needed to get the university offer, I'm gonna call clearing, which is through UCAS immediately, and then see what they can offer me with the grades I've got. If that doesn't work, then I'm gonna take a gap year. And in that gap year, I'm gonna get a job, get some experience and earn a load of money. So when I am then a student, I've got a lot of cash to fall back on. It could be that you're planning to take resets and that means the following year, you can see if you get better grades and so on. You get the point. Whatever is your worst case scenario, take a minute to then think, well, if that happens, what could I actually do instead? And when you have that plan B in your mind, it should feel slightly less scary, that thought of failure. And if you take away that fear of failing, then the stress should go down as well. And I know that plan B isn't what you want to do. It might not be what you've dreamed of for all of your life or for the last year, but many, many people end up going down the plan B route and they are still happy. You take a different route, you still get to where you need to be, or you go through a different route altogether, but you will still be happy in what you do if you make decisions that are based on what gives you joy. So give it a go if you are worried about failing. Have the plan B strategy. So that is it, those are my three top tips. But as I said, if you still feel like you need more help, please check out Young Minds, the website that I've linked below. But for now, good luck with all of your revision. Make sure you're taking those breaks, you're getting the sleep that you need and give plan B thinking a go.